Agriculture is the largest industry in the state of Ohio. A lot of people don't realize that. We've been known for steel and auto and everything else, but when it comes right down to it, agriculture is really what uh, drives the economic engine of Ohio. We bought this farm in 1977. We wanted to preserve the land the way it is today and hopefully for generations to come. Western Reserve had a great influence on in what we did. I, I sleep much better because I realize that the property will be handled in a way that I like to see it being done. Whatever your dinner table has on it, it's grown on a farm someplace. And they're protecting that, and that's important to all of us. The Western Reserve Land Conservancy really works to preserve land and create healthy and wonderful living environments throughout northeastern Ohio in, in, in quite a few ways. They obviously work to preserve natural resource areas and some of the wonderful waterfalls and prime soils and wildlife that we have here in Ohio. But in addition, they work to preserve working farmlands. They also are working on urban revitalization initiatives. We have at least 50 conservation partners across the region. Many of them are very well-known public park districts like Cleveland Metro Parks, the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. We partner with conservation organizations such as the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and Holden Arboretum. Villages and cities, here we are in Moreland Hills, one of our longest and best partners from a village standpoint. I think that the Western Reserve Land Conservancy does an excellent job of identifying and acquiring land that should be conserved and partnering with municipalities to make sure that that's successful. The Huntley Beatty Preserve, it's what's called a, a passive park. You'll have uh, hiking and biking, there's no, uh, no motor vehicles, no four-wheelers things along those lines. So it's, it's land that is to be preserved, nothing else done on it, so it's strictly there for people to enjoy it. Every one of the old quarries on this island support rare species. There's more than a dozen rare species on this property. Kelly's Island has a lot of ecotourism benefits, and having 60 acres like this so close to the village center, it's very accessible property. At the rate we're losing natural habitats, if we don't make a, a very big effort right now to protect outstanding places like this, the opportunity is going to be soon gone. If you look at maps of Cuyahoga County from the uh, 40s and 50s, the development was concentrated in downtown Cleveland and out the Euclid corridor. And if you look at the same map, uh, 2005, 2010, the county's built out. It is essentially entirely developed except for the um, Cleveland Metro Park's Emerald Necklace area, which was established around the turn of the last century. Um, the really shocking statistic, though, the population has actually gone down in that period. So it makes sense for us to steer future development towards existing infrastructure and keep the green spaces green and keep the farms growing food so we all have stuff to eat and a place to go on the weekends. We're basically standing in ground zero of the foreclosure crisis. In 2007, this particular zip code had the highest foreclosure rate in the entire United States. In Cleveland, we probably have 10,000 houses that need to come down tomorrow. Uh, and if they don't, property values will continue to plummet. People will continue to leave the city. Neighborhoods will be less safe. So we have to look at what does our neighborhood look like? What's the next 100 years in this neighborhood? And how do we reimagine it? We think that this farming project can actually be a model for what could be done with vacant land in uh, depressed and inner city communities like many neighborhoods in Cleveland. There's foreclosed homes that need to be torn down. We think that if you could amass two or three or four lots, you can really convert those spaces into thriving urban farms that contribute to the local economy by creating jobs and also take away uh, issues of crime. 
We've been setting land banks up all over Northeast Ohio. We've put a lot of time and attention into uh, searching for money for demolition. We've been to the Congress. We have a bill that's been introduced, House Resolution 4210. We'll make yet more money available for the cleaning and the greening of properties like this throughout Ohio. I think the Land Conservancy and Rakakas have done a very good job of making this issue pertinent because, hey, proof is in the pudding. We, we got some resources here, and from my understanding, they played a, a, a large part in that as well. You know, I was so impressed when I learned that this is considered in the conservation circles to be one of the top 10 land conservancies in the United States. What a wonderful gem for us here in Northeastern Ohio. We stand for a vision that today and 50 years from now and 100 years from now, this will be a thriving, healthy, beautiful place that serves people. And the only way to accomplish that is to think at that 50 to 100 year scale and say we're pursuing a positive vision. We stand for that and for those values based on the premise that all living things are completely dependent on the health of the environment in which they find themselves. You just create a healthier environment. When you remove, as Rich Cochran has said many times, the toxins, you really make it a better neighborhood and a safer neighborhood and a neighborhood where you wouldn't be afraid to raise a family. Because what we're doing is for them, it's for their kids, it's for the next kids, it's all about uh, the local residents and making Northeast Ohio a better place. What we leave behind to our children and their children really says a lot about who we are. So it, uh, conservation is just a part of who we all should be.